Hey guys, it's Tony and we're back on the bench and this afternoon we're going to be doing some reassembly servicing here on a, a beautiful reel. Uh, so we're looking at a Fenor Ahab model 16 here. You can see it says Ahab right there. Uh, you know, it's a saltwater reel obviously, uh, probably appropriate for surf fishing and things of that sort. Uh, this belongs to my buddy Dan. I uh, just picked it up recently in a big lot of uh, other fishing reels. Um, but uh, this reel, uh, it was in need of a great deal of cleaning. I don't even want to get into the bulk of it here, but you can just see, you know, we've been soaking a lot of parts here, you know, in penetrating oil, you know, for quite a while, just trying to loosen up all the old, old, you know, kind of tarred up grease in this reel and you know in its entirety it's actually not complete still in terms of the cleaning you can see that we still got you know some old stuff here you know and so we're just going to kind of finish some of this up as we go along and get this ready for reassembly uh, but yeah I, I would say you know this is a prime example of you know beautiful reel uh, ugly uh, you know uh, maintenance uh, factor you know when it comes to you know just cleaning up all these parts unfortunately because you really do need to clean them up if you want the reel to function uh, the way it's intended okay so what we've done is we've taken our time cleaning out all the old greases that, that were in here and you know from what I could tell there was more than a couple of different greases because uh, I could see a couple of different colors uh, you know, and, and that's a typical thing, you know, just keep greasing the reel, uh, you know, don't worry about cleaning it up. Well, that's that's not a good tactic because uh, all those old greases, they're going to they're going to bind up in there and they're going to harden up over time. And, you know, then what ends up happening is, is, you know, you have to spend a lot of time cleaning it like I've been doing, you know, for the past hour or so, uh, just trying to get all this this old, old, you know, grease and all this accumulated stuff out of here. There was some salt, you know, spray and stuff like that kind of hardened up in there as well. Okay. And that's the thing is, you know, people will ask, well, you know, do you really want to put the time into all this? Well, a reel like this, yes, uh, you do because, you know, this reel, it's, it's not a cheap reel. It's very well made reel. Okay. But, you know, for something like a combo reel, uh, you know, maybe you don't want to put that kind of effort into it because uh, it's just simply not worth it. OK, but we've gone through all these parts uh, with penetrating oil. We've cleaned out all these gear teeth, as you can see. Really, really nice parts here. The bearings are in good shape on this reel. There's no problems there. OK, so we just want to get right back into it. Basically, we're going to start with some simple stuff here. We're going to take some real oil uh, to this assembly here. Okay, as well as here, and unfortunately, this lever here is, uh, it, it's broken. I, I saw the piece uh, come off uh, during the assembly, and I'm not 100% sure what that does. I'm going to have to f hunt down the, the documentation or the manual on this, but it, uh, uh, but it doesn't affect the anti-reverse here, so that's something I'm going to have to make a note of. Replacement parts for this, probably not, okay, unfortunately. But the rest of the reel, you know, will function just fine, I'm sure. Okay, so we've got our pinion gear. We're going to start here with a little bit of blue grease, some pen precision blue grease on the pinion gear. And we're just going to get right back into rebuilding this reel. But yeah, projects like this are frustrating sometimes to a lot of folks, including myself, because... Um, you know, you spend all the time cleaning and, you know, it, it just turns into a lot of work. It gets time consuming and, you know, you, you only want to put so much time into a fishing reel. You know, you want to spend more time using it than you do, you know, cleaning it and, and, uh, and working on it. All right. So we've got a seal ball bearing here. It's a very nice ball bearing, nothing wrong with it there, but we're going to take a little bit of real oil and just flood the top of it here and just a little bit on the outside. And we're going to place that back down into position. And then we've got a series of washers. Now we took these off one by one. There's a thicker washer and then there's a thinner spacer washer that goes on top. Okay. 
Now this is ready to seat back down into position like so. Okay, now we've got our line rollers here. And typically these are self-lubricating. However, I normally do not mind just putting a light film of grease on this collar here. And that will help prevent any rust damage on those rollers. I have seen that happen before. And then once the rust builds up, then, you know, you, you have a really hard time, uh, you know, slowing it down over time, basically. I mean, you can apply penetrating oils and whatnot. But once those rollers get out of round, then, you know, that's where it can become a problem. This is a little tricky to do, kind of all at once like I'm doing here, but it can be done. You just have to finagle it a little bit and just kind of work it. Okay, so it should look like that. Okay, and then we're going to get these three screws, which are here. Also, don't forget there's a small shim washer that goes on top. It actually came off with the rotor when we dismounted the rotor, but it goes on top there. Okay, so we've got these screws here. We've already applied some, some oil uh, to these holes here. Okay, but you can always feel free to, to add it to the threads here as well. It's not going to hurt anything. I really emphasize doing that oil on the threads just because if you start breaking off screw heads, then, you know, you're going to have a lot more work ahead of you drilling them out and, you know, tapping them or, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. Okay, so we're going to... Spin these screws up one by one. Yeah, I can't emphasize how important it is to do all the cleaning. Because if you really want to get the full functionality of a reel, especially a nice one like this, you have to take the time to do that cleaning. Take the time with the WD-40 and the degreasers and stuff like that, like I've been doing on this one. Okay, so it should look like that. All right, so now for the next few steps, we're looking at all these parts here. All right, so we've got a crosswind gear, crosswind block. All right, we had to put a lot of effort into, you know, cleaning up those parts. Uh, then there's also a bearing and then a, a gear that detaches here as well. I just kind of kept these together just so that I don't lose track of where they are. Okay, but we've cleaned all these up the best that we can, okay, as well as all these other parts here, our main drive shaft and this pressure plate, okay, we've spent some time, you know, working on all of that, and then as well, uh, also our, our rotor, okay, we spent some time cleaning it up, there was some salt damage uh, in here, but it cleaned up pretty well on top here, okay. And so we're going to start here, actually, and we're going to reattach our rotor and get that back into position here. And we've got a rotor nut that reattaches like so. We've got a little set screw. I don't recall what this size was. I think we said it was 9 16 or 14 mil. This is a 9 16 Okay, and 
then you got to get that set screw in one of these holes here, one of these threaded holes. It's going to hold that in place and make sure that it doesn't back out. Okay. All right, so now for the rest of this here, we've got this guy here, and there's also a kind of a bushing collar that hides underneath it. All right, you don't want to lose that part. Okay, and we're going to start in here with the blue grease on that collar, and we'll put a little bit down here as well, just for good measure. We'll pop that in place like that. Okay, and then we've got our crosswind gear. We're just going to apply some blue grease to this gear here. Looks like it's a nice aluminum gear. It's very light. I'm going to place that down in position. Like so okay and then we got our crosswind block and there's actually a roller it's not a ball bearing roller but it is a kind of like a bushing roller down here so you just kind of want to make note of that all right we also want to double check this channel under here and make sure we get all this old old grease out of here it's starting to crud up we'll get that out and we're going to apply that blue grease underneath here like such and then we can also put a little bit of blue grease here on that roller as well okay that'll help ensure the longevity of that part Set that down in position like this towards the base. Okay. And then we're just going through all these other parts here. We've got this ball bearing. We'll just pop that down there right now. And we're just going to flood that with just a little bit of real oil. Okay. And then we've got these other pieces here. We've got nice clean uh, main shaft here very very solid piece right here and we're going to take the blue grease to that and prep it like so okay and then we're also going to take some blue grease to these gear teeth as well we've cleaned up all these teeth with some wd-40 and a brass wire brush toothbrushes. Uh, we use some Q-tips to get all the ex excess accumulated grease out of the channel, the inner channel of the gear. Okay, and we're just going to put that blue grease on there. And that'll make for nice smooth operation. Okay. And then there's a set screw for our main our main shaft when we get ready to go put that back into pos position here okay so we're going to start here with the main gear we're going to put that back in mesh it up and then we're going to take our main drive shaft Just got to get it lined up just right. Slide down, flat side up, and get to your, your set screw hole here. And we're just going to put a little dab of oil on that thread. And we're going to spin that up. Okay. Make note 
that there is a small shim washer here, or two actually, now that I'm looking more carefully, you want to account for those and make sure that they're, they're in position. All right, and then we've got this ball bearing here. I'm just gonna flood that with a little bit of real oil. And we're also gonna put just the tiniest light film of blue grease here on that outer shaft. Place the bearing back on top, nice and smooth. Okay, and we'll put our, our plate back on. Our three screws here. We've been soaking in some WD-40, so we don't need to apply any extra oil, really. I'm going to spin those up. So all in all, it's a pretty solid piece of machinery, I'd say. It just needed a great deal of cleaning. And, you know, that's that's a pretty common thing amongst, you know, a lot of folks that, you know, have reels. You know, they if, if they have more than, than one or two reels, you know, chances are, you know, there's always a reel that ends up sitting, you know, and you know, it doesn't get, you know, the maintenance that it probably should get, and it gets a lot of old accumulated grease and oil. It just kind of dries up on the inside, you know, sitting on a, a shelf in a garage somewhere, you know, or out in a shed perhaps, or, you know, on a boat, you know, for that matter. Okay. We'll clean this all up really nicely. And then we've got our uh, spool, okay? So this is a pretty interesting, you know, design here, basically, you know, so we've got a big disc here. It's actually a cork disc, all right? And this should not be lubed or anything like that. It should just be cleaned off, basically. And this is meant to be underneath here, in this position, underneath. Okay, but it could also just as easily ride on top of the pressure plate here. But chances are when you take it apart, it's going to be attached to underneath here. Okay, but it can go on top here like so. Going to put it back together. All right, and then these pieces here are relatively simple. There's a couple of washers. There's like a tension washer, a regular washer, Okay, and then a, a clip to hold that all in position, like so. And sometimes these are a little difficult to work with, so I recommend just getting like a, a small flat screwdriver like this one and get that set back in position like that. We've cleaned all this up the best that we can. It wasn't really that dirty to begin with. Uh, Finnor is known for making their reels out of really, really good metals, titanium, alloys, and things like that. They have a good reputation for that, so that kind of helps the, the longevity. Okay. All right, we've cleaned up our our spring and knob tensioner here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that back in. And then last but not least, we've got our handle. Okay, and we just wanna apply a little bit of oil here to that handle and then also to these threads as well. I'm gonna go put this back together. Thread that back up. And I 
also heard a little squeak here on the handle knob. A little, little real oil will typically take care of that right there at the seam. Okay, so we're going to dry off the gloves here a little bit, and we're going to dry off the reel a little bit. And we're going to give it a shot, and we're going to see how it works. Bale fires real nice and strong. Yeah. And this is a reel where it has this uh, post, okay, to trip uh, the bale, okay? You can see it right there, right? That's a pretty common design for a lot of these older, big uh, spinning uh, style reels, you know, that are made for salt water. Okay, we're going to tighten up our drag here a little bit, and we're going to see how that's working. Yep, that's, that's engaging really nice and smooth. You get a lot of turns on that. Okay, make sure you back it off when you're not using it. That'll help ensure the life of those washers and the drag stack. Okay, and anti-reverse is working well. So, there you have it. That is the Fenor Ahab Model 16. Beautiful specimen of a reel, and it's all serviced up and ready to go. And thanks again for watching. This is Tony Wood back on the bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please make sure you do subscribe and hit the notification button. That way you will get all the updates as to when there are new videos coming out. And I should be having quite a few more coming out shortly. So make sure you stay tuned for those. And we'll see you next time.